I'm working on this teeter-totter and it's essentially done and what I need to do is I need to generate a bill of material so we can purchase the material you required for it and get the other ones manufactured. So what I want to do is I want to create a bill of materials. So I have a collection of blocks in here and if I take a look at it, I can see that I've got this cap, right? So here's a cap standard black. The block is cap. I can see it's got a part number. This one's standard black and if I take a look at this one, it's still a cap block because it's got attributes. Notice this is a tall red and we can see that the part number is different. Now this is actually the same cap. It's just that it's in a different orientation. So we can see here that we've got this block called cap side and it too has attribute information on it. So we can see that it's the same cap standard black. I can see we've got this beam. The beam's got some attribute information. And I can see that we've got this spring and the spring also has some attribute information in it. So what I want to do is I want to extract this information and present it in some form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a table. Now from this table, I don't actually want to start from an empty table. What I want to do is I want to grab data in the form of a data extraction. So notice that everything else disables because I'm going to use the data extraction wizard to populate this table. So we'll click OK. And now what it's going to do is it's going to step me through the process. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to create a new data extraction. Where do I want to save this, this data extraction? I only have the one drawing to include. So you, know, you could include multiple drawings if you wanted kind of one master list. But I do want the entire drawing, not just certain objects in that, in that drawing. And notice again that I could add a folder of drawings or I could add more drawings. And if I take a look at my settings, I can also say, well, I just want the objects in model space, which in this case I want but I don't want to include XRefs. I don't have any XRefs, but I, I would want to include them. So we'll click Next. Now what it's going to do is it's going to list all the objects available in this drawing to extract information from. So you can see that I could pull out information about circles. Maybe I want all the, the drill points and I want to pull out the XY coordinates so I can pass this on to you know, the CNC guys so they can put this on the machine and, and cut out all the holes. But in this instance, what I want is I just want the blocks and I, I'm really only interested in the blocks with attributes. So notice that it's, it's picked up those, those four types for me because that's all that there is for blocks in this. But I can quickly filter out that other information. So I'll click Next. Now what it's asking for is what information do you want to include? Well, in this instance, I, I, I'm not really concerned about the position of it. I'm not really concerned about what layer it's on, but that too would give you some different information. You know, maybe you, you've created layers for the, the seats and the beams and the support, and you just want to, you know, call out those certain sections. You can definitely do that. In this case, what I'm interested in is just the description and the part number. Now, what's key for this to work like a bill of materials is that your blocks have to have similar attributes. Because if you think about a bill of materials, what does a bill of materials typically have? It's got the part number or stock number. It's got the description. Maybe it's got the material. Maybe it's got manufacturing information or purchasing information. But it's consistent across all the parts in your, you know, in your component, in your, your assembly. So in this case, all my blocks have descriptions. And some of them have a part number. And I just wanted to show what happens when some have an attribute and some don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Next. So we can see here that I've got you know, the beam, the cap. Notice how I can click the column headers to sort it differently. So maybe I'd like to do is sort it by description. And in this instance, the name doesn't actually help me at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm not going to show the name column. Now we can see that the combined identical rows is turned on, yet these two aren't merging. And it's because one has a part number and one doesn't. So I'm going to continue with the process. So I've sorted them by description is how I want to see it. Perhaps what I'd like to have is I'd like to have the count at the end. I'd like to have the part number at the beginning. And I'm going to click Next. Now what I can do is I can insert this into my drawing. I could also export this out to, as you can see here, a spreadsheet, a database, a CSV file. So if you want to, you know, present this to someone else, just, you know, be cautious with this and knowing that that information won't update automatically and you'd have to do a re-export to update it. So we'll click Next. 
you know, I'm going to manually set up the table here. I can see I've got my, my table style. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click next and then finish the process. So what we'll do is we'll insert that into the drawing. Okay, so how can I get those block instances to, to merge? So let's go to the to the, these tops here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that block. And I'm going to add another attribute. So let's just take this existing description one and let's just move this down. And let's change this to be the same attribute. We'll save our changes. We'll do a synchronization on that. Let all of them update. And let's go get that part number and let's set this one to be the same. And what we'll do is we do the same thing because we know that these are all the same. I could just recopy the block as well. But what we'll do is we'll just update this. So now we've got the same values. And while we're over here, what I want to do is I also want to take a copy of this tall red one and I want to insert two more copies of it. So I'm going to locate two more copies of it. And we go back and take a look at our table. We can't see it's, it's updated yet. I'll do a regen. So we can see that the quantity, the count updated, but we can see that the rest of the table didn't update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that data extraction again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the existing data extraction. You can see that it remembers all the information that we wanted to, to keep. I wasn't concerned about anything else. Now I'm going to make one change here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this display name to be cap so that it matches the, the other one because they are both, both caps. I'm going to click next to continue. We still want the description and part number. We'll click next. And now what we can see that it's taken that cap even though the block instance itself is different and it's merged it together. Now in this case, I still don't need to see the name column. We can see now we've got that part number, we've got the description, and we've got the full counts. So I'll click next. We're gonna insert that into our drawing. We can see here that we can you know, manually set it up. So the title is gonna be bomb, and we'll click next, and we'll finish. Now, as you can see, it's that I didn't need to insert it. It's just that I needed to step through the wizard to, to update it. So I needed to use that wizard to change the settings so that it recognized that I had new blocks or blocks with new attributes to pull that information. Now, obviously, I'm going to want to go back and I'm going to add, I want to add part numbers to that beam. I'm going to want to add part numbers to the spring. But it shows you how you can use the data extraction tool when you have blocks and attributes to build a bill of materials. So when you're using AutoCAD and you need some type of parts list, some type of bill of materials, data extraction to the rescue.